Creating a video game story is hard. Not only are developers given the gargantuan task of coming up with a compelling narrative that can support tens of hours of gameplay, but it has to fit in with those gameplay mechanics themselves. The two different facets of gameplay and narrative have to mesh with one another, otherwise they lead to some inconsistencies that can't easily be explained. Unfortunately, even the best games don't get this right, which has led to huge leaps in logic or gigantic plot holes that players have been discussing for years. Although developers would just rather sweep them under the rug and let fans forget about them, players aren't ones to do that, instead discussing these plot holes for years and trying to fill in the blanks on their favourite stories. Still, these solutions are mainly just headcanon, and players are finally starting to realise that these plot holes may never be solved. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are the 8 most discussed video game plot holes that will never be answered. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number 8. Makarov being a celebrity level terrorist ruins Modern Warfare 2's No Russian Plan. One of the most controversial levels ever made, at first glance Modern Warfare 2's No Russian Level seems to make perfect sense. You're cast as an undercover American agent who's got in with a gang of Russian terrorists who are about to stage a mass shooting at a Russian airport. After the massacre, it's revealed that your so-called comrades knew about your double agent status this whole time though, and they shoot you, leave you for dead, and in the process spark a war between Russia and the USA. The problem is, however, despite the one confirmed suspect being an American and the rest of the gang using no Russian to hide their identities, their identities still should have been pretty easy to suss out. Why? Because the team is being led by Makarov, one of the most wanted terrorists in the entire world. His existence and appearance is common knowledge, not least to the international bodies trying to take him down, so if they don't even consider for a second that he might be behind it, then I think they need a new job. Number 7. Jack Marston growing into a badass in 3 years Red Dead Redemption has one of the most memorable endings ever, with hero John Marston being gunned down on his own farm. But that's not technically the end of Rockstar's epic though, as the game picks up after this so-called final scene. Catching up with John's son Jack three years later, you control the new Marston in his effort to get sweet sweet revenge on the people who killed his father. The problem is however, it's never actually explained how Jack went from this sheltered kid to revolver twirling badass in a mere three years. Likewise, it doesn't really make sense for Jack to follow in his father's footsteps, and it sort of goes against the entire point of the game. The whole narrative of the game is about John trying to get away from that bloodthirsty style of life, so to have his son go down the same path seems to contradict everything that came before. Number 6. Elena magically stumbling across Drake in Uncharted 4 Elena and Drake's romantic relationship has essentially been the entire backbone of the Uncharted franchise, so there was no surprise when Naughty Dog put the two through the ringer in Uncharted 4. In fact, the two seemingly break up at around about the halfway point when Elena catches him on his extracurricular activities after he had lied to her about not doing any more adventures. Inevitably though, the two do get back together, but it only comes after Elena finds a wounded Drake in the woods and nurses him back to health. The thing is though, when Elena does catch up to Drake again, he's actually lost in a jungle that no one has explored in centuries. Consequently, even with a little bit of help from Sully, there's no way that she could have just stumbled across him, as even the goons that were hot on his tail can't find him. The game attempts to wave this away by saying that Elena followed the gunfire, but that's a little bit of a flimsy excuse to justify this huge leap in logic. Number 5. Ethan's Convenient Blackouts in Heavy Rain like all good crime stories, Heavy Rain keeps the identity of its killer a secret until the very end of the game, by leaving red herrings throughout the rest of the title to throw players off. Unfortunately though, some of those red herrings just don't make any sense when you actually find out who the killer is. The worst attempt to trick the player though is easily the convenient plot device which sees Ethan black out every single time the origami killer strikes. Waking up later with incriminating evidence on his person, these sections set Ethan up as a killer who can't actually remember his murders. Obviously though, the character isn't actually the killer at the end of the game. 
It's explained that his blackouts are caused by stress, which, you know, is fair enough considering his son is being kidnapped and all, but it's never explained why they always happen at the same time the origami killer strikes. Number 4. Resident Evil 4 Sadler says he wanted you to escape after repeatedly trying to kill you. The entire plot of Resident Evil 4 focuses on Leon Kennedy as he attempts to save the president's daughter Ashley from a Las Plagas loving cult. Players go through hell to save her, fighting off cult members, skewering giant fishes, and constantly avoiding the traps laid down by the main boss Sadler. Which makes it so ridiculous when it's actually revealed that Sadler didn't want you dead at all, but was using you as a pawn in his master plan. Because his end goal was actually for you to save Ashley so she could return to America whilst infected to infect the president and then hopefully infect everyone. You know what, that's a fine plan, there's just one snag. Sadler has been trying to kill Leon for this entire game. Number 3. Bioshock's Jack surviving away from Rapture despite only being a year old. The Bioshock series is known for its mind-bending twists, but the problem with the majority of them is that they fall apart if you only think about them for a few minutes. The final twist at the end of the first game is no different, which reveals that you're actually playing as a test tube baby who's been aged up and sent to the surface to come back to Rapture in the space of only a few years. You're given the body of a fully grown man, despite the fact that you're actually only one years old by the time you leave Rapture for the first time. The thing is though, between his birth in Rapture and him returning to it a few years later, Jack apparently lived a normal life on the surface. The scientists did quickly give him some false memories so he would forget his time in Rapture, but I doubt they gave him information like how to do taxes or how to find a flat that would be essential in him surviving on the surface. How he lived a normal life then despite only technically being one year old is never explained and it probably never will be. Number 2. Mass Effect 3's Backwards Final Choice There is a lot that has been said about the ending of Mass Effect 3, too much if you ask me, but one thing that's often overlooked is how the final good and bad choices contradict everything set up in the series. Throughout the whole trilogy, the colour blue was used to infer the good Paragon choices you could make, whilst red was the more evil Renegade decisions. Well, they uh, really got creative when it came to that system, didn't they? To support this good evil dynamic, the game uses Captain Anderson to essentially be Shepard's Obi-Wan, while the elusive man always represents the allure of the dark side and the devil on his shoulder. However, the third game's finale inverts this, using Anderson to represent the bad choice to destroy the Reapers which is tinged in red, while the elusive man represents the good blue choice of controlling them. It's a weird, seemingly random change that just happens in the final moments for no real reason, and it unfortunately wasn't elaborated on in the extended cut. Number 1. Crisis 2 forgets what the first game established about nuclear weapons as far as video game stories go, the Crisis series isn't exactly rubbing shoulders with the likes of Uncharted or Bioshock. It's not exactly highbrow storytelling, and consequently you don't bat an eye when the military decides to drop a nuclear bomb on New York City in the second game to stop an impending alien invasion. It's a solution that's actually in line with Crisis 2's 80s action movie influences, but it only works on the assumption that the writers forgot everything about the first game. Because the original Crisis also saw a nuclear bomb used to eradicate an alien threat, only there the nuclear blast actually made the alien force even more powerful. Why the military would try the same thing again in the second game then is anybody's guess. So those are all the plot holes I could think of, but I want you guys to let me know if I missed any down in the comments. And while you're there, please give us a like, share, or subscribe, and all that jazz, and check out whatculture.com for even more lists like this every single day. I've been Josh, you've been watching What Culture, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe below, and if you're looking for more content like this, then try a few things that are floating about around my ears. It might be fun. I can't promise it though. But it might be. Bum 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 bum